Next on Currents News, historic findings on the Hispanic and Latino ministry in America are presented to Pope Francis this morning. A special report from the Vatican is coming up. With vaping clouded in controversy, local Catholic schools are working to keep their students safe. I'm Emily Druby and that's ahead. A Queen's Catholic Academy is achieving embassy status. We'll explain how that's opening doors for more kids to get a Catholic education. Plus, a boost for pro-life advocates. Abortions in America are falling. The numbers are the lowest since Roe v. Wade's Supreme Court decision. The news starts right now. Good evening, I'm Tamara Lane. Tonight, Pope Francis has in his hands the results of the National Fifth Encuentro. The historic findings coming from the work in the Brooklyn Diocese and from around the nation to make the Hispanic and Latino ministry in America stronger than ever. Melissa Butts has this exclusive report from the Vatican. Statistics from Catholic, Hispanic, and Latinos from 175 different dioceses in the United States were presented to Pope Francis this morning. The Diocese of Brooklyn was among them. Wednesday morning, a U.S. delegation of Catholic bishops and laity concluded a four-day trip to Rome, Italy. Their goal, present the results of last year's national fifth encuentro of Hispanic and Latino ministry to Pope Francis. Bishop Perez of Cleveland, Ohio explained, it's been a very long process. We came here three years ago talking with the Holy Father and Cardinals from different departments about what we expected and wanted to do. Now we come back telling the story of what we can do. This story is the result of the September 2018 Encuentro with 3,000 Hispanic and Latinos in Texas. Themes included accompanying immigrants, higher education, leadership formation, community outreach, and evangelization. The conclusions are based on four years of study, and as Bishop Cepeda from Detroit says, listening. This process of listening, of consulting, of listening to our people, of being able to see how the church is treating and responding to the pastoral needs of our people. Today, they told Pope Francis the excitement Hispanic and Latino Catholics have for their faith, especially youth. Additionally, bishops shared how they are hoping to accompany these communities and form leaders and missionary disciples across the United States. They say the next step is for U.S. bishops to implement the pastoral plan so that the United States becomes a nation that welcomes immigrants and thus transforms the Catholic Church in the nation. At the Vatican, Melissa Butts, Currents News. The Holy Father taking on something else that's very important, caring for people affected by Alzheimer's. Francis telling thousands of pilgrims in St. Peter's Square today that more must be done for patients. Una malattia che colpisce tanti uomini e donne, i quali a causa di questa malattia sono spesso vittime di violenza, maltrattamenti ed abusi. The pontiff added that the mistreatment of people with the disease tramples on their dignity. This Saturday is World Alzheimer's Day. Some 50 million people suffer from some form of dementia. About two-thirds have Alzheimer's. News out today is showing the fight to protect unborn children is gaining ground. Pro-life supporters are cheering the results of a new survey. Abortions are decreasing in all parts of the country, down to the lowest number since 1973 when the Supreme Court's Roe v. Wade decision legalized the procedure. According to researchers, 926,000 abortions were performed in 2014. That number has plunged to 862,000 abortions in 2017, the latest year with full statistics. Areas with the highest abortion rates are New York, New Jersey, and the District of Columbia. A poll of the American public is showing a majority of people don't believe doctors should perform abortions if they think it's wrong. According to the U.S. Bishops Conference sponsored study, 58% of respondents said doctors should not be forced to kill the unborn if they morally object to it. An even larger number of people polled, 83% said that healthcare workers should not be forced to perform any medical procedure if they don't agree morally. 
The big news from the nation's capital tonight is about America's confrontation with Iran and our national security. Nadia Romero has the very latest, starting with the heightened tensions in the Middle East. Saudi officials not mincing words Wednesday, vowing to hold Iran responsible for Saturday's attack, knocking out nearly half of the kingdom's oil capacity. Rebels in Yemen claimed responsibility, but Wednesday, Saudi officials said that can't be true. They are still working to determine the launch point. This attack did not originate from Yemen, despite Iran's best efforts to make it appear so. Secondly, the attack was launched from the north and was unquestionably sponsored by Iran. Iran has denied it's responsible. President Donald Trump tweeting he's increasing sanctions against the country, but leaving all options on the table. If we have to do something, we'll do it without hesitation. And one of his top supporters echoing those strong words against Iran, Senator Lindsey Graham, the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. I am looking for a response that would be unequivocal. If they don't pay a price for bombing a neighbor's oil fields, then all hell is going to break out in the Mideast. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo traveling to the region to weigh in on the situation. This was an Iranian attack. The intelligence community has high confidence that this was not, these were not weapons that would have been in the possession of the Houthis. All of this happening as President Trump names U.S. hostage negotiator Robert O'Brien as new national security advisor. In Washington, Nadia Romero, Currents News. It's official. Flavored e-cigarettes have been pulled from sales everywhere in New York State. The Public Health Council voted unanimously to enforce Governor Andrew Cuomo's ban. Vape shops and bodegas have two weeks to get the products off store shelves. New York is the first state to put a ban into effect. Michigan's goes into action in a few weeks. The epidemic of vaping-related lung disorders has hit hundreds of people nationwide, and there's been seven deaths. Currents News Emily Druby now reports a Catholic high school in Brooklyn is cracking down on vaping by students. Within the walls of Zavarian High School, you'll see kids shuffling to class, chatting in the hall, learning. The one thing you won't see, any vaping. But the school's principal says a year ago that wasn't the case. We didn't take it very seriously at first. I don't think anybody did. And the situation became much, and more, much more dire in that it became sort of almost accepted. E-cigarettes have become a hot-button topic in schools across the country as a growing number of teens seem permanently attached to the vaping devices. Recently, the FDA found more than one in four teens they spoke with used e-cigarettes. What many are finding alarming, seven people have died from suspected vape-related illnesses. Hundreds of others are currently suffering from lung illnesses associated with vaping. <laughs> this is what scares students at Zavarian the most. They're worried for their friends. This scary health news has only stopped some kids from vaping. A large part of the problem is that a lot of people see their friends doing it and then peer pressure kicks in and they're like, you know, if I see my friend doing it, she's my best friend. Like, it can't hurt her. If it's not hurting her, it's not going to hurt me. And then they try as well. What has worked at this school? Strict consequences put into place last January. On the whole, I think it has decreased immensely. Students caught vaping or with paraphernalia face suspension, parent meetings, removal from extracurriculars, even expulsion. Students agree that it has made a big difference. I mean, you just don't see it as much. I've seen people get in trouble. I've seen people get like expelled from the school. And I've like noticed a lot of chatter when it's one of their friends. They're saying, oh, they got caught. And we should be more careful. They're cracking down. When you are taken off of those extracurriculars, it's not like, oh, I'm just off football. It's like you're off football. You're off speech and debate. You're off music. The fight against e-cigarettes is not specific to Zavarian. Catholic schools across the diocese are joining in. Many implementing diocesan programs which teach kids the horrors of e-cigarettes, hoping that helps to curb usage. By taking these steps, Zavarian and other local diocesan schools, hoping vaping will go up in smoke. In Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, Emily Druby, Currents News. We've told you before about the fake text messages that scammers have been sending to parishioners in the Brooklyn Diocese, trying to steal their money through phony donations. Now, New York's Cardinal Timothy Dolan is warning about online accounts. He's tweeting, I've heard from some of you, you've received Facebook or Twitter messages from an account pretending to be me. Please know I will never reach out privately on social media to ask for donations. Now an update on the health of another top American Catholic leader, Archbishop Joseph Kurtz. 
His bladder cancer treatments are coming to an end next month. Then he'll head home to Kentucky to get ready for surgery. The Archbishop is saying that his stamina is very good. The former president of the U.S. Bishops Conference also reports that he'll know by Thanksgiving what his prognosis is. Archbishop Kurtz remains in our prayers. Tonight, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is canceling his trip to New York for the opening of the U.N.'s General Assembly next week. He's fighting for his political life. The longtime leader greeting his party supporters after the polls closed in Israel. At this hour, Netanyahu's Likud party is expected to win 31 seats in parliament, one less than the party of ex-defense chief Benny Gantz. If those results hold up, Gantz would likely get the first chance to form a coalition government. There's a lot more news headed your way. How one Catholic academy is helping underprivileged students get the best education possible. Houston is preparing for its heaviest rainfall since Hurricane Harvey. Amelda has made landfall. Plus, one presidential candidate is connecting climate change and population control. We'll talk to a bioethics expert about the argument. Do you have a story idea or want to share a tip? Email us at newstips at desalesmedia.org or call our 24-hour number, 718-517-3122. We'll be right back. A Queen's Catholic Academy has a special status, and that's helping students achieve the dream of receiving a Catholic education. Currents News' Tim Harfman explains from Elmhurst, Queens. Great time, more time. Sitting in her seventh grade math class, Ashley Sella is grateful for her Catholic education. I'm lucky that I get to study in this school. She was enrolled in public school until last year, when St. Bartholomew Catholic Academy provided her family with a scholarship. It means a lot to us because it's really giving me a chance to study in a Catholic school and um, it's really helping my parents. The Sellas are one of nearly 50 families receiving tuition help this year because the Elmhurst Queens Academy is considered an embassy school. It means it uh, gives the opportunity for children in our parish to, to come where parents might be struggling uh, with the full tuition. It's a way for the parish to give back to this immigrant community made up mostly of Filipinos, Ecuadorians, and Mexicans. School officials meet directly with parents, Assessing their financial needs. Then scholarships are granted from $300 to $1,500. But it's not only about academics. When we ask our parents, what do you want for your child? They want a school where they can learn, but also be rooted in their faith. St. Bart's is one of 15 Catholic academies in Brooklyn and Queens with the embassy status. The schools not only provide scholarships, but are able to fund programs such as robotics, art, and bring technology into the classrooms. Eighth grader Braden Castro is on the robotics team. He wants to use his opportunities to become an engineer when he grows up. I wanted to like um, try to add something to, to the world and try to like make the world a better place. Good morning, kindergarten. Good morning. Good morning. And that's what the Academy wants for its nearly 180 students and counting. St. Bart's also reaches out to nearly 800 students in the parish's faith formation program. We're trying to gain more to come out of the public school and come into a Catholic uh, environment and community. To strengthen the Catholic community for generations to come. In Elmhurst, Queens, Tim Harfman, Currents News. Tonight, Houston is on flash flood alert as a new named storm batters the region. The bad weather is called Amilda, and right now it's a tropical depression. But it's forecast to linger for a couple of days and dump the most rain on the area since Hurricane Harvey. So far, parts of Houston have been inundated with seven inches. Many of the city's schools were closed today because of the storm. The Bishop of Brooklyn, Nicholas DiMarzio, is asking for donations for the victims of Hurricane Dorian. He's been requesting that every parish in the diocese take up a voluntary monetary collection next weekend, September 21st. All donations collected will be sent to the Archdiocese of Nassau. 
If you would like to make a donation directly to the diocese, you can make checks payable to the Compost Ella Fund and write Bahamas in the memo section. The mailing address for those checks is Compost Ella Fund, 310 Prospect Park West in Brooklyn, zip code 11215. The address is also listed on the tablet.org. New York City's public school students are getting the okay to skip class on Friday to take part in a climate strike protest. Catholic schools sponsored by Long Island Sisters of St. Joseph are organizing a delegation to join the demonstrations, creating t-shirts quoting Pope Francis' encyclical Laudato Si, that the climate is a common good belonging to all and meant for all. Three days after the strike, the United Nations will hold a climate action summit in New York. These events are happening at a time when new concerns are arising that the climate movement could be colliding with the sanctity of life. Dr. John Brahaney is an ethicist at the National Catholic Bioethics Center. He's with us now. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, so on the campaign trail, Bernie, tra Bernie Sanders said that uh, population control should be a part of addressing climate change. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, I think for years, uh, elites have been telling us that we should fear overpopulation and out of that fear that we should be willing to take some draconian measures to reduce uh, the population of the earth. Uh, many of those measures are inconsistent with human dignity. And so I would be quite cautious about uh, making any radical moves uh, to change human population to save the environment. So do you believe overpopulation is a concern and is it something we should be worried about? You know, um, we always have to balance our resources uh, and things like that, but we shouldn't fear overpopulation like the elites have been trying to, to fan the flames of panic for decades at all. In fact, I would say the thing that we should be concerned about is underpopulation. If I could just explain. for. For a couple of hundred years, and especially since the 1960s, people have told us we're going to run out of land, out of food, out of water, and we'll all starve. And none of that has come to pass. But now we're finding that rich nations aren't having the babies they need, and that's a real problem. Some people are saying that it would be best for the planet if population was reduced. Uh, you just spoke about that a little bit, but how should Christians react to these extreme views? Well, I think we have to keep our priorities straight. Uh, human existence, human beings are profoundly good. We have an important role to play in creation, to tend and to keep it. But if some people start to tell us that animal species or the climate is more important than human beings and human dignity, then I think they will be rec recommending measures that will be profoundly harmful to both. Some people argue that the U.S. should fund abortion and contraceptive programs overseas. How would this impact America's relations abroad? You know, America has gotten a bad reputation in the past for cultural imperialism, trying to foist our products, our culture, on other nations often to, to benefit us. So I think we should be very careful. In fact, I don't think we should be funding immoral interventions like abortion. And we should respect the beliefs of people in many of the countries of Africa, Christian populations that don't accept these things. Dr. John Brahaney, an ethicist at the National Catholic Bioethics Center, thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. Still to come on Currents News, a huge Irish Pride event is about to kick off in Brooklyn. Coney Island's Great Irish Fair is this Saturday. The tablet has a special pullout section on it. Editor-in-Chief Jorge Dominguez tells us all about it. And a fast food worker jumps into action to save a dying man. He says God had a hand in it. This week's tablet is jam-packed with stories you won't find anywhere else, including a religious order whose home is officially in the Brooklyn Diocese, and a big event going on this weekend that showcases Irish pride that you won't want to miss. The tablet's editor-in-chief, Jorge Dominguez, is here to tell us about these stories and more. Welcome, Jorge. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Tamara. So, Jorge, there's a new religious order that is now calling the Diocese of Brooklyn home. 
That's official as of last week. Tell us about them. Well, there is two interesting uh, details about this. The first one is that, you know, we usually know the Sisters of Mercy or the religious order, but we don't ask ourselves how religious order starts. And believe it or not, we're still today, you know, religious orders, new religious orders, uh, you know, start their, their life. And this religious order in particular, uh, they, they are from Colombia. They were founded in Colombia as an association. And they moved to Brooklyn. I mean, the mother house now of the order is in Brooklyn. And they started the process to be recognized officially as a religious order. And they were officially accepted to be in Brooklyn after 10 years working here. Now they are officially here. So it's, and by the way, another th very interesting thing about this order, they preach the, the, the gospel through cultural events theater, painting, it is, uh, you have to read the article. It sounds like a very exciting story. Um, let's turn now to a sadder story that you have in the tablet. It's about a group of widows who are helping others grieve. Can you tell me about this? Well, you're, you're right, it's sad, but on the other hand, it's hopeful. Because this is in St. Kevin's Parish in Flushing. 20 years ago, they started a group, you know, a support group for, for widows and widowers. And, and they, they are, now they are 70 members. And yes, they are dealing with the pain of having lost a spouse, but at the same time, the article talks about, you know, all the hope and all the good things that happens in the group. And, and you know, in that sense, it's a very hopeful story. Well, the weekend is fast approaching, and you have a big story about something that's happening in Brooklyn, the Great Irish Fair. It's happening this weekend. You've got a special pullout about it. Tell us about what readers will see. It is a celebration of, uh, of Irish culture, but of course it starts with a, with a, with a mass, right? Irish Catholic, right? <laughs> and um, this week in the tablet, we have a whole special section about the, you know, the, 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 the great Irish fair, the honorees, what the event is about, or how you can participate. And by the way, remember last year, our Ed Wilkinson was one of the honorees. Oh, that's right, that's right. Well, quite a spectrum of news in this week's tablet. Jorge Dominguez, editor-in-chief of the tablet, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me, Tamara. And the tablet needs your support to ensure that Catholic journalism will thrive well into the future. You can do so by subscribing to the tablet so that it comes right to your mailbox. You'll save up to 55% by having it delivered to your home versus paying for it at church. Go to the website, thetablet.org slash home 55 or call 877-883-8356. And the tablet has a brand new page called Our Diocesan Family, where you can share your pictures of recent baptisms, Holy Communions, Confirmations, Marriage, all the joyous sacraments. For more details and to submit your photos, go to the tablet.org slash Our Diocesan Family. Your picture may be published in an upcoming issue of the newspaper. Finally tonight, a fast food manager is crediting God with helping him save a man from dying. 22-year-old Talia Neyukai was working at a California Chick-fil-A when he noticed an unconscious man who had gone into cardiac arrest in the parking lot. Talia ran to the rescue performing CPR until paramedics arrived, saving the man's life. Talia said the experience helped him confirm his vocation to become a nurse. And that was truly a, a real big eye opener to my calling to be in healthcare because at the moment it was like instinct took over. Like that was the place where God placed me to be at that moment. Talia is currently applying to nursing programs and hopes to start classes early next year. That is Current News. I'm Tamara Lane. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.